indeed be glorified be glorified in our lives be glorified in our lives you are the mighty god the great i am hallelujah hallelujah you are the thank you because indeed you are the mighty god we thank you lord god because we depend on you we pray tonight that again you will show yourself mighty let the wind of change change every situation that before now remain the reproach let the wind of change change lives let the wind of change change situations father we are depending on you do that which only you can do and take all the glory in jesus holy and mighty name we pray amen and amen praise the lord i want to thank the almighty god for this opportunity and i want to thank our parents in the lord for their labor of love and this opportunity to minister unto the lord tonight as we look at the theme wind of change it is my prayer that every one of us will indeed believe god for a change in our lives in jesus name i'll take my text from the book of genesis chapter 8 verse 1 genesis chapter 8 verse 1 and I'll read from the New King James Version. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. Wind of change. We have two keywords in our team wind and change in the context of our team in the context of this message wind is a mysterious agent wind is a mysterious agent one night our lord jesus christ was talking with a jewish leader a pharisee by name nicodemus and jesus in that discourse revealed to us that the wind is a mystery you can find that in john chapter 3 verse 8 john chapter 3 verse 8 the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes i will stop there this particular revelation by jesus christ was summed up in a nursery rhyme
taken from this scripture emphasizing the mystery of the wind that nursery rhyme says who has seen the wind neither you nor i but when the trees bend down their heads the wind is passing by we don't know where the wind is coming from we don't know where it is going but we can feel the wind when the wind is around we can feel the wind the wind is a mystery on the other hand change is simply the process that makes a difference change is simply the process that makes a difference change does not make noise it simply shows up for example if you have a drunkard in a neighborhood who have been a nuisance people know the drunkard for his nuisance if that drunkard ceases to be a drunkard he doesn't need to come and begin to announce it when people will see him sober when people will see him responsible they will know that a change has taken place so change does not make noise we need to remember that God had just destroyed the entire world with a flood like never before, sparing only the lives of Noah, his family, some wild beasts and livestock. The type of flood that happened at the time we read from this text had never happened before and will never happen again after that flood there was no structure remaining all over the world no structure was spared the topography landmarks and landscape of the world was permanently changed the flood wiped out everything the law the flood made the world unrecognizable the flood was such that the highest mountain the highest mountain there was water 22 feet above the peak of the highest mountain you can see that in genesis chapter 7 verse 20 Genesis chapter 7 verse 20 such was the height of that flood we are talking about from our text we can also see that the earth at this point was desolate there was no life of any human being no life of any animal no life of any plant remaining on the earth the earth was desolate but we saw something interesting there the wind of change brought restoration of life to the earth the wind of change brought restoration of life to the earth the bible tells us and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided with wind God brought restoration to the earth I want us to take note of that the disciples encountered this wind of change in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting these were timid disciples 
disciples that were not bold enough to identify with Jesus at his time of need. But when this wind of change came upon them, the disciples turned to bold apostles. They became so bold that they could, Peter could stand before thousands of people and point at them and say, you, you killed him. He was so bold, he could tell them the truth without minding whatever the consequence was going to be. The wind of change. Again, we must bear in mind that God made us as human beings for a divine purpose. He made us for a divine purpose. But the enemy, in his deceitfulness, took away the divine purpose that God made us for and sold a dummy to us. If you look at the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11, Revelation 4, 11. Thou, I read from the King James Version, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and we are created. All things we are created for God's pleasure, including us. Unfortunately, man allowed the enemy to exchange his destiny and estate. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible now tells us that we all, we all, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. We have a remarkable encounter with the wind of change. With a man that people had written off. In the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 15. Mark chapter 5, verse 15. When the madman of gatherings encountered the Lord and the Lord saved him from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of affliction, we are told in that man, chapter 5, verse 15, that those that knew him before, when they came, they were left in no doubt that change had taken place. Mark 5, 15. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They were afraid because they could not fathom how that man was so drastically changed. It was because he had an encounter with the wind of change. I will narrate a personal experience to you some times ago i was led by the holy spirit to take the gospel of the lord jesus christ to the condemned section of the prisons in port Harcourt. they call them condemned criminals i was persuaded that they needed to hear the gospel and I went to the prison superintendent and shared my intentions with him. He looked at me and laughed. And he said, my friend, go and preach to the other prisoners. These ones in the condemned section of the prison, no one goes near them. They've already been condemned for capital offenses. So if you go close to them, they can easily kill you and nothing will happen. Even if you condemn them to death three, ten times, they can only die once. So we don't allow anybody to go near them. Even when they are to be taken out for execution, the wardens that are sent are usually paid so much in order to give them the incentive to go close to those people. I left, I came back, I told him I was still persuaded to go. I went there for some weeks. Eventually, the man got fed up with me. He called his assistants and he said, Look, 
this young man has been coming to pester my life here and he calls himself a lawyer but i don't think that he knows what he's talking about but please allow him to go whatever he sees there let him take i thanked him i said thank you sir and i went as i was going he told them to escort me and they followed me to that condemned section of the prison when i got there i saw how they were barricaded there were cells on one side here cells on this side no doors but big iron bars to cover the entrance to the various cells the cells were cramped up and they had their toilet in that cramped up cells the place was thinking like you can never imagine there was just a corridor in the middle and i took my bible and i began to preach from one end of the corridor to the other and i was sharing the gospel of jesus christ to them and at the end i asked them to give their lives to christ and i saw some hands popping up i prayed for them and i left the next week i came again they said no 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 you can't go this week come the week after i obeyed their instruction and again i saw some hands they gave their lives to christ i continued with that pattern until one day i went to the prison and it was the superintendent that was rushing at me say hey pastor come 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 <laughs> i told him sir i'm not a pastor i was not a pastor then <laughs> he said no no you are not a pastor you are not a pastor come 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 that please can we now be opening the cells for you every week i say wow i say why not i said that was what i was looking for he said please not only opening the cells that we want to open the courtyard so that you can have fellowship with them i say wow that would be wonderful i say but wait a minute why this sudden change of mind he now told me he said look since you started coming to preach to these guys and they started giving their lives to christ the crime level in the prison had fallen and the crime in the city of port Harcourt has fallen and in the whole state and neighboring states that we have noticed a drastic fall in crime because some of these men here they still control criminal gangs from outside the prison i say wow that is that was great he said drug trafficking had drastically reduced so if you can continue to preach so that all of them will give their lives to christ we know that our prison will be a better place that was how for the first time in the history of the prisons in nigeria they allowed a civilian to be meeting with condemned criminals in the courtyard of the prison and each time i went i will share the word of the lord with them on this particular occasion i went that is actually why i am sharing this testimony i wanted to share the message i prepared the holy spirit said tell them about me i didn't understand i tried to continue with my message again i heard the voice tell them about me ha i say about you i was confused the third time the holy spirit said tell them about me ah i stopped with my message and i asked them do you people know the holy spirit they said we don't know it i said no it is not it it's him he's the third person in the trinity and i began just to explain primarily who the holy spirit is i was unprepared but as i was just talking about the holy spirit i had the sound of a wind whoop 
that wind just passed my ear and hit those prisoners we were having what we used to call open heaven fellowship there was no roof and that particular day it was raining so we are all under the rain these men were slain by the holy spirit they fell on the mall they were rolling and they were speaking in tongues they were speaking in tongues that was the wind of change the waters that came that escorted me they ran away from the condemned section of the prison they were so scared of what they saw they ran out there and when i was going i saw them they knelt down they say pastor pray for us we are the ones that need protection you don't need any protection and as from that day they stopped escorting me to that place but do you know what shortly after most of those men were taken out for execution they were taken out for execution i was not there that day but as they were being tied for execution you know what happened the priest that the government sent to go and administer the last sacrament that was an official thing to them when the priest came close to them they've been tied up they were asking him father are you born again are you born again the priest was shocked he looked at them they say if you are not born again where we are going you cannot come there they were singing and faced execution they were not afraid why because of that wind of change because of that wind of change so that is what we are talking about you may be here if you have not experienced this salvation that can transform lives that can make you a new person i want to tell you you are just wasting your time some of those men that were condemned i had personal discussions with them they confessed to me the type of heinous crime they had committed some were hired assassins armed robbers all manner of people but when their lives encounter that wind of change they were transformed i don't know who you are i don't know where you are in life but i want to assure you if you will allow this wind of change to encounter you your life will never be the same it does not matter the addiction it does not matter the lifestyle you may think you are irredeemable but i want to assure you if this wind encounters you you will never be the same this wind can transform your life it's a supernatural transaction are you struggling with an affliction like that madman of gatherings is it an illness that the doctors have told you that it is irreversible you hear testimonies upon testimonies here how people will come with reports of doctors and the word of the lord will come from our father in the lord giving specific word of knowledge and those irreversible problems will be reversed if you're here tonight and you are in such a situation all i beg of you is to humble yourself before the lord if you will humble yourself the lord will do what you have never thought of in the book of james chapter 4 verse 6 james chapter 4 verse 6 the word of god tells us that god gives grace to the humble please do not pretend be humble enough 
to tell the Lord that you need help. Even if you are responsible for your own problem, for your own affliction, the word of the Lord says that God will deliver the lawful captive from the hand of the mighty and terrible. So I want you to prepare your heart as our Father in the Lord comes to minister. I want to assure you that when you are expectant, every mountain will be raised down. Whatever it is that has been a giant in your life, the Lord will bring it down. And that your life that you think is irredeemable, God will make you an ambassador of Christ. I would like us to pray. And I would want you to please from your heart, ask the Lord to help you. I want us to pray, please. Let us talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's talk to him in prayer. Whatever your situation may be, are you here? The word of God says, no matter how dark, how black your sin may look, even if it has black as soot, you will make you as white as snow. The word of the Lord says, come unto me. You that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I don't care what your situation may be. All you need to do is to ask God, come and help me. I've struggled on my own. I don't want to struggle anymore. I want you to take over. Pray from your heart. Refuse to accept the report concerning your health, concerning your destiny. Refuse to accept man's report as the final report. Let the word of the Lord be your final report. Talk to him in prayer. Be open for his deliverance. He will deliver you and make you an ambassador of Christ. Like he made that madman of God reigns, an ambassador of Christ. He will make you an ambassador of Christ. Talk to him in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, we pray. Father, we are depending on you. As we look upon you like the maid looks at her mistress, may our expectations not be cut short. Let the wind of change make change that will be so visible that people will see us and thank you people will see us and give you all the glory thank you abba father in jesus holy and mighty name we have prayed amen and amen